For centuries, people have wondered if it was possible for a single person to fly using some kind of man-made machine. Several inventors, eager to prove that the ability to fly could be attained, would build gliders ranging in complexity in order to test their latest theories. These new theories would spark a sense of curiosity within the minds of two Ohio bike shop owners, Wilbur and his younger brother, Ervil Wright. The Wright brothers became interested in the idea that man could fly through the works of early aviation pioneers such as Otto Lilienthal, a German engineer who had managed to successfully repeat over 2,000 flights in his gliders, and Octave Chanute, who had started out as a successful railroad civil engineer in 1849. After he finished his career as a railroad engineer, Schnute began to experiment in the field of aviation and would aid the Wright brothers throughout their trials. Finally, on December 17, 1903, at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, after almost three years of experimenting, the Wright brothers' dream of flight had become a reality. The Wright Flyer I became the first powered, heavier-than-air machine to sustain flight while being controlled by an onboard pilot. The Wright brothers continued to experiment and improve upon their previous models and would even submit a bid to the military in January 1908. During this time, there would be many new aircraft engineers, all of them willing to apply and improve upon the Wright brothers' milestone invention. Eleven years after the Wright brothers had successfully made their first flight at Kitty Hawk, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the eventual heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, was assassinated along with his wife by a Serbian terrorist on June 28, 1914, which, a month later, started what would be known as World War I. Along with tanks and machine guns, the Great War, as World War I was also called, would be the first conflict to see the aircraft adopted into the militaries of several countries. Uncertain of how they could apply these new machines for war purposes, military commanders originally used the aircraft for observation and reconnaissance missions over the surrounding battlefields at the start of the war. At first, reconnaissance planes were unarmed, and enemy pilots would sometimes wave at each other as they crossed paths. But that happy story would not last for long. Eventually, enemy pilots attempted to shoot at each other unsuccessfully by using simple weapons such as pistols and rifles. This would lead aircraft designers to build small, light fighter aircraft with forward-mounted machine guns. These fighters would be used to establish air superiority by eliminating other enemy fighters, as well as aircraft used for bombing and observation. It could be said that aircraft development was still in its infancy at that time, with aircraft companies attempting to perfect their latest models from structural issues that plagued early designs. The aircraft of World War I were mostly made out of wood and canvas, some parts of the aircraft, mainly the forward fuselage and engine cowling, were built using metal. The wood and canvas construction of these early aircraft proved to be very dangerous and harmful to the pilots and their aircraft. If the wood was weak or badly damaged, there was a chance that, especially if put through harsh aerial maneuvers, the aircraft could lose one of its wings or the canvas would rip off the wings and elevators, thus preventing the aircraft from generating lift. Worse yet, if the enemy managed to shoot one of the fuel lines that ran close to the pilot of the other aircraft, that pilot would be presented with some grim options. Jump out of the burning plane without a parachute, since parachutes had not been invented yet, or go down with his aircraft in flames. World War I aircraft were also prone to stalling, and since the nose of most aircraft at that time were very heavy, they had a tendency to nose over as the pilot attempted to land. However, there would be several aircraft designed during this First World War that would help to change and slowly perfect the design and role of aircraft in combat. In 1915, the German military released a deadly new fighter aircraft, the Fokker E-1, or as it was also called, the Fokker Eindecker. This aircraft was built by a young Dutch designer named Anthony Fokker. Fokker had originally intended to go into the field of auto mechanics, but soon developed an interest in aviation and would continue to build several aircraft for the German military throughout the war. Contrary to most aircraft being produced at the time, Fokker designed the E-1 to be a monoplane instead of the more common biplane style. To allow the aircraft to roll to the right or left, the Fokker E-1 was fitted with wires that would move the entire wing in a process known as wing warping. The same style of control was also used by the Wright brothers on their Flyer 1. The Fokker E-1 would also become the first aircraft to be fitted with a properly synchronized machine gun in front of the pilot, thanks to a special mechanism developed by Anthony Fokker. This mechanism synchronized the rotation of the propeller with the machine gun fire in order to prevent the machine gun from shooting the propeller. The Fokker E-1 would help to give the Germans air superiority in 1915, starting what would be known as the Fokker Scourge. In July 1915, the Newport 11 became France's answer to the dreaded Fokker Scourge. 
designed by French aircraft designer Gustave Delage, the Newport 11 was originally built for racing, having a top speed of 97 miles per hour compared to the Fokker E1, which had a top speed of only 88 miles per hour. The Newport 11 was superior to the Fokker E1 in both its speed and its maneuverability. The Newport 11 was also designed to be a sesquiplane, which means that the bottom wing was about half the surface area of the top wing. This gave the little Newport the characteristics of both a monoplane with its greater speed and a biplane with its greater strength and maneuverability. The Newport 11 was not without its disadvantages, though. It lacked the synchronized machine gun that was equipped on the Fokker E1 and was equipped instead with a 303 caliber Lewis machine gun that was installed on its top wing. The Newport 11's smaller bottom wing was also structurally weak and, if put into a high-speed dive, the wing had a tendency to twist, leaving the pilot in a terrible predicament. The successor to the Newport 11, the Newport 17, would fix some of the issues experienced by the 11. The Newport 17, which was introduced in 1916, would help to reduce the likelihood of the bottom wing twisting and would be equipped with a synchronized 303 caliber Vickers machine gun along with the top-mounted Lewis machine gun on some variants. The Newport 17 would also continue the respected legacy of its predecessor by achieving a high speed of 110 miles per hour, greater maneuverability, and an increased rate of climb. Both Newport variants would serve in the British and French militaries, but these fighters are probably most remembered for serving in the Escadrille Americaine, or Lafayette Escadrille. This was a French squadron founded in 1916 that accepted volunteers from the United States since America remained neutral at that time. Many famous pilots from different Allied nations would become high-scoring aces while flying Newports, such as British ace Albert Ball, who had a total of 44 kills, Canadian ace Billy Bishop with 72 kills, and French-American ace Raoul Loughberry, who scored 16 of his kills while flying with the Lafayette Escadrille. Following the incredible achievements of the British Sopwith triplane in 1917, German engineers, being highly impressed with its performance, began working on a triplane of their own. Using a captured Sopwith triplane as his reference, Anthony Fokker would build one of the most iconic fighters to emerge from World War I, the Fokker Drydecker, or Fokker DR-1. This fighter has become almost instantaneously recognizable due to its association with legendary German World War I ace Manfred von Richthofen, or as he is better known, the Red Baron. An excellent marksman and tactician, von Richthofen had originally started his flying career in an albatross fighter, but his squadron, Jasse 11, would later receive the Fokker DR-1 in August 1917. From the start of his career until his death on April 21, 1918, Manfred von Richthofen had scored a total of 80 confirmed kills. 16 of his kills were scored while flying his Fokker DR-1. The Fokker DR-1 was an extremely maneuverable aircraft with good pilot visibility and an outstanding rate of climb that was capable of outclimbing all of its opponents at the time. The early models of the Fokker DR-1, however, were plagued with structural issues on the wings, and as a result of several accidents, all Fokker DR-1s would be grounded until this problem could be fixed. Nevertheless, the bright red paint scheme of von Richthofen's aircraft, along with the rest of his squadron, the Flying Circus, as they were called because of their brightly colored aircraft, would make the Fokker DR-1 an icon of aerial combat during the First World War. Almost as equally famous as its German rival, the British Sopwith F-1 Camel would prove to be a serious threat to its opponents. Built by the Sopwith Aviation Company and then later introduced into the British RFC by the end of May 1917, the Sopwith F-1 Camel was credited with destroying 1,294 enemy aircraft, more kills than any other Allied aircraft during the war. The Camel would derive its name from the hump shape that was located on the part of the fuselage which contained its two synchronized Vickers machine guns. Unfortunately, the Sopwith Camel was a very sensitive aircraft that became very difficult for young inexperienced pilots to handle. The Sopwith Camel's powerful Clerger 9B 9-cylinder rotary engine, which gave the Camel a top speed of a little over 113 miles per hour, would cause tremendous issues for pilots during takeoffs as they tried to compensate for the engine's equally powerful torque by applying full-right rudder in order to prevent the aircraft from performing a ground loop. Another issue with the Sopwith Camel was that its center of gravity was oriented towards the front of the aircraft because of the position and weight of the engine, machine guns, and pilot, thus causing the Camel to become notoriously nose-heavy and difficult to land. Because of these difficulties, many young pilots, especially trainees, would be killed while flying this aircraft, 
413 died in combat, while 385 would die from non-combat situations. These difficulties, however, could be mastered by a skilled pilot and exploited against the enemy. Despite some of the issues with this aircraft, the Sopwith Camel proved to be a highly maneuverable fighter with great speed and firepower. As World War I began to draw to a close, both the Allies and Central Powers would introduce two of their most advanced fighters, the Spat 13 and the Fokker D7. In September 1917, France would release the Spat 13 to both its French and the new American squadrons. This aircraft was one of the fastest and most produced fighters of World War I. The SPAD's Hispano Suiza 8BE liquid cooled V8 inline engine would help to give this fighter its incredible top speed of 140 miles per hour. The SPAD's major disadvantage, however, was that it would become difficult to control at low speeds. Despite this, the SPAD 13 would achieve great fame because of the many top Allied fighter pilots that flew this aircraft, such as Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, America's ace of aces. Rickenbacker had started off as an accomplished race car driver, but later, when war broke out, he joined the military, and then, because of his great desire to fly, would be transferred to the 94th Aero Squadron, the famous Hat in the Ring Squadron, named so because of their logo. While serving with the 94th, Rickenbacker would initially fly the more advanced Newport 28, until the arrival of the SPAD 13s, which he used to score most of his kills. By the end of the war, Eddie Rickenbacker had accumulated a total of 26 kills and would later receive the Distinguished Medal of Honor for single-handedly attacking seven German aircraft and destroying two of them, one of which was a Fokker D7. The Spad 13 had been a tremendous success, but by April 1918, the Germans had finally issued what could be considered the best and most advanced German aircraft of World War I, the Fokker D7. Built by Fokker's chief aircraft designer Reinhold Platz, and with the earlier variants having been tested by legendary ace Manfred von Richthofen, the D7 had some of the best performance capabilities of any fighter at the time. The Fokker D7's simple handling characteristics, along with its ability to briefly prevent going into a stall or a spin, allowed some of the most inexperienced pilots to control this fighter with ease. Highly maneuverable, fast, and with an excellent rate of climb when equipped with the 185 horsepower BMW 3A inline engine, the Fokker D7 could easily outclimb most, if not all, Allied aircraft. Even though the D7 had some issues, such as the wing ribs having a tendency to fracture and gas tanks that broke on occasion, this aircraft would still be regarded as a fearsome enemy by Allied fighter pilots. When World War I finally ended on November 11, 1918, all German military aircraft, especially the Fokker D7, would be confiscated, and Germany would be forbidden from having any military or naval air forces, as directed by Chapter 4, Section 3 of the Treaty of Versailles, ending the Fokker D7's time of service in the German military. World War I proved to be an important time in the field of aviation. Thanks to the aircraft of that era, engineers learned new concepts about aerodynamics, and, after the war, these engineers would put their new designs to the test, allowing aircraft to become far more advanced than before its creation. Military commanders also began to see the strong potential in aircraft for playing many roles in combat, and the belief that air superiority was essential for victory would become a main strategy for commanding officers during the following global conflict. <laughs>